Sugar is sweet, but its aftertaste for the global healthcare system is bitter. Close to 400 million people worldwide are affected by type 2 diabetes. 4.8 million people die of the chronic disease every year, a number that is quickly rising. Costs to the global healthcare system are estimated at a staggering 470 billion US dollars, representing over 10% of all healthcare costs. By 2020, the number of people affected could be close to 500 million, and costs could rise to a whopping 700 billion dollars. The Credit Suisse Research Institute's 2013 study, Sugar, Consumption at a Crossroads, shows that type 2 diabetes and obesity are linked to excess consumption of sugar, particularly in a liquid form. Things started to change in the 1960s. Following the wars, rations and measured consumption became a thing of the past. In the 1970s and 80s, Concerns arose around the increase in heart diseases and other chronic problems. At that time, with limited scientific proof, the blame for these rising health issues was put down to fat. Nobody asked whether replacing fat with sugar to keep things tasting good was a smart idea. These days, added sugar is in almost everything on the supermarket shelf. It makes up at least 17% of our diet. Today, the world daily average consumption of added sugar per person is 17 teaspoons, up 45% compared to 30 years ago. And hear this, the American Heart Association recommends no more than 6 teaspoons for women and 9 for men. Who's eating all that sugar, you ask? The US is ranked number one in consuming sugar and caloric sweeteners, with an average of 40 teaspoons per person per day. It's not surprising that the country has the world's highest rate of adult obesity. It's ranked second in childhood obesity and has a relatively high prevalence of type 2 diabetes. Brazil, Argentina, Australia and Mexico are close behind, each averaging between 35 and 38 teaspoons per person per day. If you're asking where much of that sugar hides itself, around 43% of added sugars in our diets come from sweetened beverages. Recent studies, including the Credit Suisse Research Institute's analysis, show that type 2 diabetes and obesity are highly correlated with full-calorie soda drinks. Just one can of soft drink averages 8 teaspoons of sugar. Our bodies are not fond of these liquid calories. The large injection of sugar is easily and quickly ingested without the consequential feeling of being full. Regardless of the amount people feed into their bodies, genetics also play an important role in the ability to tolerate sugar, as well as the prevalence of type 2 diabetes. This might also explain the differences across countries and races. The good news is that public perception is beginning to shift. Already, some consumers are becoming aware of the adverse effects of excess sugar intake. Though the level of awareness varies significantly with geography, income, and particularly education. Governments and health officials too cannot ignore the social and economic impact. Credit Suisse believes taxation is an option that may soon be tested in some countries. At minimum, this would help fund the growing health costs associated with excess sugar consumption while reducing daily sugar intake. We have learned from the tobacco industry, taxation is effective. But could the food and beverage industry end up in the same boat? Will warning messages soon appear on all food products and drinks that contain high levels of added sugar? Join the discussion and let us know what you think.